Okay, 90 Day Fiance, I'm way, way, way behind. But 90 Day Fiance, happily ever after. I'm going to start with the Michael and Angela. Get right into it because those are the, to me, one of the more challenging relationships. So Michael and Angela are fighting because it's because it's Monday. Like, they, that's just what they do. They argue, they fight, they argue, they fight. Angela had the gastric bypass as she had a breast reduction. She now is looking at skin surgery for her face because her neck is like sagging and her arms or whatever. Michael didn't want her to get the surgery in the first place. Um, and he, like, according to her, he fell back. He didn't um, contact her. He wasn't checking on her. He just checked out, basically. And um, he just said, because I didn't want you to get the surgery. I don't want you to, you know, because you could die on the table. And she kept saying it was life or death. And I'm like, mm. I had a breast reduction that wasn't life or death. It was a painful thing to go through because it was distressing your back and everything else. But Angela, you know, her doctor recommended her have the gastric bypass and the breast reduction because once you have one, the other one would not be as helpful so they did them both at the same time and michael was worried and you know some men just don't know how to operate when their wife or their loved one is hurting so they just act out or just not do anything at all and that's not right that's not wrong that's not indifferent it's just what it is so she's upset with him and he's just like, well, it's not fair that every time I have an opinion or I don't don't want you to do something, you do whatever you want to do. But if that was me, you would have a heart attack, which is so true. She could say, Michael, don't go out tonight. Michael goes out tonight and it's a whole other problem. Michael, don't get um, penis injections. He going to get it. She going to be mad at him and it's a whole problem. But it's always Angela's way or no way at all. Um... The biggest problem I feel that Michael and Angela have is Angela's mouth and the the inability, um, the inability of her or for her to not understand him. And when I say understand him, what I mean is he's trying to tr to do Nigerian language to English language and make it come out right at the same damn time, and that's just not how. It, it's been working for him or it is it can work for him because she doesn't she doesn't get it so it's 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 hard so my example Michael said to her um, I need you to give me some space what some space what you mean this is America you've been half space this is America I'm an American I'm like what the hell does that have to do with anything he said I need space to tell you how I feel. I need space to give you, for you to like be quiet and listen to me so I can try to get out my feeling. And she doesn't get that because she just keeps going and there's never an off button with her because she always feels somebody is trying to like one, one up her or talk over her or just be mean to her and she's just not listening. Um, I think an interpreter would help the situation because she, um, it may be easy for him to, to say in Nigerian sometimes when they're having problems. So they apologize, of course. They make up. Angela says, well, I won't do a divorce, but if you do it again, I'm going to get a divorce. And typical Angela, she's been doing this since they got engaged and got together. She's leaving. She ain't with him no more. Yada, yada, boom, boom. Cot, cot. Um... So, next couple, Tiffany and Ronald. I used to like Tiffany because Tiffany was, she made sense. Ronald's not doing this. Ronald's not doing that. Ronald has a history of gambling. Ronald doesn't manage money. Ronald, 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 which is to, to regular people, American people, which is supposed to be doing. Um, you're supposed to be paying bills. You're supposed to be taking care of the kids. You're supposed to be sending money home. You're supposed, like, do what you're supposed to do. And the culture, and this is where I think a lot of the couples struggle. It's the culture. And, you know, he wants her to come over there, but she has to pay for it. He doesn't have the money to pay for it. He works a part-time bullshit job, according to Tiffany. But, you know, Ronald is like, oh, I don't know what she wants from me. I'm trying so hard. When I try so hard, it's not enough. Then she 
her son, which he keeps saying is his son, um, you know, he wants his dad to come for Christmas. And she's like, well, I don't know. You have to prove to me this, prove to me that. And I'm like, Tiffany, you have to stop. Like, you have to have known when you married this man with his gambling addiction, with his debts that he had, with his um, financial issues, there were going to be problems. But you continue to do it, and you continue to sleep with him. You continue to marry him. You continue to have a baby with him, knowing all these problems were coming into play. So I, this is why I don't have any kind of empathy for any of them, because you do this to yourself. Now... Tiffany goes over there for Christmas and they get into an argument day one. She gets off the flight and she comes to the house and she realizes he didn't buy no food for her. He didn't buy no food for um, for the, the kids. So she's like, well, honey, baby, like we have to go shopping. And how didn't you do this? How didn't you know this? And he's looking at her like she's crazy. Oh, it's no big deal. Let's go to the store. They go to the store and he forgot his credit card to pay for food. And I'm like, when she got to the house and said, we need to go to the store to get food. At what point do you not pick up your whole wallet or your money? But you know, whatever. It was 300 and something dollars in food. He didn't have enough on his on one of his, the card he did have. So she had to pay the other half. She gets upset about that because she's like, he's buying stuff that we don't need. And I'm like, you you can't say he got need food and then he buy food and then it's too much food. Like, just stop, Tiffany. So then they go on a safari and, um, no, sorry, they get back. Let's get back until they get back home and Ronald is um, putting the groceries away. She comes in the kitchen and she's like, Oh, baby, I'm so tired. I'm exhausted. This was a long flight. Then we had to go to the grocery store. Can you please help take care of the baby, Carly? And I just need someone to help. Honey, like, seriously, like, right now, please take her. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. And he's like, I'm putting the groceries away. She goes, well, stop for a minute and then take the baby. And then he starts mopping because water spilled. I mean, what the fuck is going on right now? What is going on? So they get into... um an argument because he would not take the baby so then she gets up gives him the baby in the kitchen and heads back to like lay down or something and she's standing there watching him before she heads out he gives the baby who might be two maybe two a plastic bag and she goes what are you doing another argument because she he gives her a plastic bag to play with ronald you don't give no baby no plastic bag um, but he don't know. He never been a father, so how would he know? And it's just then they go Christmas tree shopping because it's Christmas time. He wants to get this big Christmas tree. He's trying to do the right thing and have a nice Christmas, their first Christmas together. And the little boy Daniel's excited, and Daniel is, oh yeah, Dad, let's get this Christmas tree. And they, you know, having a good time in the Christmas shop. Of course, Ronald spends way too much money and her problem is you know he spends all this money and I know he's going to have problems paying it back which is going to turn into my problem because I'm going to have to help him pay it back because he doesn't have the money and it's just a snowball effect of over overuse of money Tiffany's overuse of her mouth and her and her alleged power then they go to see a safari which is cute they're all having a good time Tiffany uh Ronald's mother comes Ronald's mother is not here for the shit and she's just like Tiffany where's the problem you look sad she tells her what the problem is and it's like here we go again the problem and Tiffany's mother said I mean Ronald's mother said a very a very important fact and I think Tiffany sat back and was like oh shit you might be right she said you have high expectations of Ronald and when your expectation is not met you're upset you ha and it's almost like not set the bar low for him but you have to give him a, a break or help him along the way to get what you want and she doesn't get that Tiffany is American like I'm an American and it's you want you want a microwave you want it to be done in one minute or less and that's a huge problem 
So, um, she starts crying and then Ronald finds out that they were talking about him and he gets upset and he's, they sleep in separate beds. Then they try to have dinner together and it starts all over again with the fight. And, you know, they go into the, wake up in the morning and they talk about the problem. So he said, as a South African man, this is, I find everything you're doing offensive. I'm trying to be the man in a relationship. I'm trying to, um, you know, basically be the man you want me to be. But every time I take a step forward, I get two steps back because you don't give me a chance. And it and it's she she looked like oh maybe maybe you're right maybe I should slow down calm down hold on, and it, you know it gave her pause. Um, now I'm not saying that he deserves a full break on everything because common sense shit he should be doing, but I'm gonna move on from running it up his ass. Um, Natalie and Mike, I I just need y'all to not be together sometime because uh, this all this date y'all shouldn't have got married. Natalie goes to have this nasal surgery that she has um, planned that she didn't tell Michael about. Michael finds out by way of her friend who um, they had dinner with. And Michael's like, why didn't you tell me? And I'm like, how did you tell him? Don't you got to go through his insurance? Don't you got to get like pre-authorization, doctor's appointments and where they live don't seem like they have a lot of options for doctors. Like it's a big city. So they um get into it michael's like i'm gonna support you of course but you have to like tell me these things surgery is major no matter how small you think it is come to it day of the surgery he wakes up she's gone didn't say michael i'm leaving didn't say michael here's a date time place he figured it out the uh, he takes a cab because she took the truck and he's trying to call her, call her, call her. No answer, nothing. I'm like, who the fuck does this? Cause you have to have a ride back. So are you here with your friend? How did, like, how did you think you could come out of surgery and drive back home, which was about two hours away, according to him. So he drives around the parking lot of the hospital, finds her, finds the truck. He gets in the truck and pulls off. I was like, oh. That's what we doing? Oh, okay. So, um, you know, he, um, he, he second guesses himself, comes back, and he says, you know, that wasn't right. I'm not going to do that to her. We'll just talk about it later. And she comes out of surgery. They go home. He's trying to take care of her. She's being super annoying again. Oh, Michael, please just don't move change lanes. Oh, Michael, I want potato and mushrooms. And oh, Michael, do the. Um, he's like, I got it. Just lay down and relax. And it goes into another snowball. And then they have a conversation later about why did you do this to me? Why did why did you just leave me? And we'll see what happens next week. So that's all I have on 90 Day Fian. Oh, excuse me. Jovi and Yara. Yara, young mother. They're, I think in their early 20s, I had my son when I was in my early 20s and I was nothing like she is. I get it, Jovi wasn't there, so she thinks she is the ruler of the, the castle and she can do what she wanna do when she wanna do it. It's Christmas time again, so she they invite Jovi's family over after Jovi comes home from being away for three months and you know, to his new apartment that's in the suburb that Jovi did not want because he wanted to be close to the city because Jovi, what is a partier? And Yara was like, no, you have a baby now. You have to be in suburbs. Oh no, Jovi, Jovi, this is not how things work, Jovi. You have to be in the house by 6 p.m. No, Jovi, the baby has to go to bed by 6 p.m. She has to have a schedule with Jovi. And it's like, girl, please, you wear me out. They invite the parents over. Yara wants to do a traditional Ukrainian um, Christmas, but their Christmas is like January 6th, whereas the U.S.'s Christmas is um, December 25th. So she's cooking this nasty-ass food, and all the family's like, mm, like, they try it, they don't like it, whatever. Um, and then she's like, oh, Jovi, come help me in the bedroom, you know, with the, with, with the baby, changing her. And I'm like, what? She want these people to leave after like two hours. They drove two hours, they stayed two hours, and then they children to go home. 
So basically, they, they'll have a six hour day for two hours. He's like, I'm not telling my parents and my family to go home. Who does that? That's rude. You do it. How about my parents are not going home? My family's not going home. You go ahead in the room with the baby. I'll be out here with them. Like, put her the fuck down to go to sleep and come back out and everybody just watch your tone and lower your voice because she's sleeping. Number one, I don't know what baby go to bed at 6 p.m. Anyway, let's start with that. So his family is just saying, you know, I can't, I can't imagine Jovi is like this parent. I can't, I can't believe he's like in the bed at six or seven o'clock. Jovi used to be like coming home at six, seven in the morning. Like, you know, you can come a parent and you change and your lifestyle changes, but she has him on some kind of crazy tight leash and it is insanity to say the least. Um, and he's pissed at her and she's like, well, I don't understand, Jovi. In Ukraine, you come to people's house, you eat, and then you go right home. You don't sit around and talk. We don't do that. But, bitch, we are not in Ukraine, okay? We are not in Ukraine. You've taken him out of his party environment, away from his family. They finally come and visit after him being gone for three months, and you want them to leave in two hours. How does that make sense? Make it make sense. You can't because it don't. But anyway, he's a sucker. You would, I mean, it would have to be a happy medium some kind of way. But I digress. Anyway, that's all I got. Ain't got no more. Like, comment, subscribe. And don't forget to comment below. Let's talk about the people. Let's talk about it.